we watch movie. I'm Mike. He's Jay. I said, God damn! My legs got a little bit How do you guys feel about that? No, I know. You fucking screamed it hard. Jeez! Squeeze the juice! Captain Planet. Squeeze the juice. Green Hornet is the place to be. No, it's not. They're rebooting Green Hornet. Are you movie. excited? I wasn't excited when I read it originally. Uh, this news comes from Deadline. I wasn't excited when I read it originally. Read it. Ding, 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 ding. Fuck me in my Charlie horse. Um, no. I wasn't excited originally, but when you hear this guy talk yeah. about the movie, it reinvigorates you. Okay. Let me tell you uh, tell me. what he has to say. Tell me. It's it's Gavin O'Hood, okay? Gavin O'Hood. Ga or Gavin O'Connor. Um, and he's the director of The Accountant, which was fucking badass. Well, you missed that one too, did. didn't you? Fuck it. Cunt. I don't care. I don't... Okay, I'm going to watch guy like talk about... My numbers. It's awesome. I know. Is he like Rain Man in that? He's like he's like Rain Man had sex with Batman. I like it. It's fucking awesome. I should watch it. And Jason Bourne. But anyways, mm -hmm. um, Paramount bought the rights to the Green Hornet, which you remember the last fucking yeah, terrible one, Seth yeah. Rogen. Um, but he says, I've been waiting to make this movie and create this franchise since I've wanted to make movies. As a kid, when most of my friends were in a Superman and Batman, there was only one superhero who held my interest, the Green Hornet. I always thought he would be the bet baddest badass because he has no superpowers. The Green Hornet was a human superhero, <laughs> so it was Batman. But yeah, whatever. Yeah. And he didn't wear a clown costume, and he was a criminal in the eyes of the law and in the eyes of the criminal world. So this all felt real Batman to me. Batman is the same way. Imagine climbing to the top of the Himalayas or Mount Everest or K2 over and over again, and no one ever knew. You can never tell anybody. That's the life of Yeah, it's really great that he's having a nostalgic moment, but to the fucking point, Mac. Eat my butt. Okay. Um, he said, when I discovered the rights were available, going to track them down, and uh, blah, 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 uh, blah, blah, blah. I want to re-mythologize the Green Hornet in a contemporary contest with an emphasis on story and character while at the same time incorporating things that, themes that speak to my heart. The comic book movie is the genre of our time, and I like what he says here. How do we look at it differently? How do we create a distinctive film experience that tells itself differently from other comic book movies? Mm -hmm. How do we land comfortably at the divide between art and industry? How do we go deeper, prompt more emotion? How do we put a beating heart into the character that was never done before? These are my concerns. These are my desires, my intentions, my fears, my goals. Okay, so he went straight fucking poetic ending. Man, I gotta I respect mean, I, that. I, I'll say, listen, Green Hornet is not my favorite superhero. I understand what Green Hornet and Kato and the whole idea behind them. They're cool. They have their own place in comic book and superhero history. But as far as, like, live action movie, I I don't care. Now, it depends on what, he, what he's talking about, though. Is he gonna thread the line... Uh, and make it more like Deadpool and Sin City kind of thing. And that's his point. He doesn't want to make the Marvel formula. He wants to make something different. I Paramount, about that. And Paramount doesn't have any of these titles. I mean, they, 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 they've got like Jack Reacher and shit. They're not in with the other... But they have the Phantom. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Zane! Um, but Christmas here's story. what else he says. He says, when we meet Britt Reed, he's lost faith in the system. Lost faith in service and institutions. If that's the way the world works, that's what the world's going to get. He's a man at war with himself. A secret war of self that's connected to the absence of his father. It's the dragon that's lived with him that he needs to slay. Another Bruce Lee. Dude, that is such a, but that is such an atypical, like, sounding thing that a loser would say to themselves that they can't get friends or girlfriends. They're like, I've got the dragon inside, and I don't need friends. I'm at war with myself. By dragon, you mean virginity. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's the virginity that he needs to overcome. But speaking of which, I'm saying, not virginity, but speaking of which, mm -hmm. I think this movie, if it's told in the way, like I said, the stylizations of, like, a Sin City or a John Wick or... Um, a Deadpool, it could be successful. And I want them to do that. That's what I think he's looking at. And the way he did The Accountant, it seems like he'd be perfect for that. Because The Accountant, in, in, in many ways, is an origin story, but it also does so much more. What if Ben Affleck is secretly the Green Hornet and Batman? <laughs> That's funny you say that, because he says, and the journey he goes on to become Green Hornet is the dramatization of it, and it becomes Brit's true self. I think of the film as Batman Upside Down meets Born Inside Out by way of Chris Kyle, the dude from American mm. Psycho, Psycho, or American Sniper. He's the anti, he's not the guy, he's the yeah. actual you yeah. know, uh, do the movies. I got on. it! He's the anti-Bruce Wayne. His struggle is he a savior or a destroyer. Britt made money doing bad things, but moving forward, he's making no money doing good things. He must realize his destiny as a protector and force of justice by becoming the last thing he thought he'd ever become, his father's son, which makes him a modern-day helmet. By uncovering his past and the truth of his father, Britt unlocks the future. What are you doing? You look like you're trying to sell sex ads. Green makes me tired! No, and no, horny! I, I say the Green Hornet, okay? Speaking of... And this, I have to poop! Uh, do you? No. Okay, but the Green Hornet, again, not my favorite uh, superhero out there, but he's got a decent backstory. He's got like he's got cool little things that he does with Kato. I, not like with Kato. I don't know what they. <laughs> We're do. not gonna butt fuck. I don't each know other. what they do off screen, but uh, obviously we can't butt fuck. Everyone's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> your role models. Yeah. He's like, but, remember the proper way to hug children is in the front, not to the back. And then he's like, well, we're not gonna butt fuck. No, he's these like, kids. obviously we're not gonna butt fuck these kids. <laughs> uh, but yeah, okay. So speaking of uh, but Green Hornet, yeah. 
Uh, again, stylizations are going to make this movie or break it. Like, uh, Seth Rogen did a terrible job as far as what that whole movie turned out to be. This one, if he's going hardcore with it, if he's going to say it's Jason Bourne meets Batman, it's going to be this really dark, gritty kind of world. I kind of like that. I kind of like the idea of a, of a Bruce Wayne, but an anti-Bruce Wayne at the same time. Yeah. Not, you know, Bruce Wayne is always struggling within about like how far is too far to go, and yet he still does the right thing at the end. This guy might tote the line a lot more hardcore than uh, Batman Bruce Wayne. It reminds me of what people say with, with like people using like business speak and stuff like that when you're talking about a company like mm -hmm. well the idea is shit but i'm betting on the horse yep. like this guy even though green hornet and like in a world where fucking i mean superhero fatigue is really a, a real thing like i mean let's yeah. do a show based on the dude's parents last uncle and and maybe he fucked a goat i don't know That's bad. it works slap it on spread it on bestiality but in this you hear this guy talk man and he's so deep and he's already got it figured out and his love for the character yes nicholas cage loved ghost rider and we saw all that turned out yep. but you bet on the horse in this instance and I think that just hearing him talk about it and knowing what he's done in the past, how good the accountant was, I didn't care about the Green Hornet before. And now I'm fucking stoked for this. I movie. think it would be. I think if they do it right, it could be a good movie. I mean, for sure. But I mean, I have trouble believing that they're going to be able to sell the title to moviegoers with Green Hornet. They've already been ex exposed to the Seth Rogen catastrophe, uh, you know, earlier, and now they're going to be like, okay, Green Hornet again. And you, you just mentioned the superhero fatigue. So when you're like sitting around and you know thinking about what kind of movie am I going to go watch tonight, and you see Green Hornet, well, most likely you're not going to be like, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to go see Green Hornet. Until, but the but, trailers, like the trailers show you the something trailers got to be really great. Yeah, they'll like, lay that's it out. The thing. So I, they bought the rights to it. Paramount needs, uh, you know, a, you know what a I want to see? I, I want to see uh, another Sin City mixed with like the Watchmen, mixed with the Jason Bourne. I want to see that dark, gritty yeah. reality. Uh, experienced again on, on screen. I mean, they did it with Batman vs. Man a little bit, but not to the point that they could do it with this. Right, and they have the right guy for the job, so I say fuck yeah, John Joe! Good to suck a dick, John Joe. I love your fucking faces! So to see, probably, I don't know for sure. I love you guys. I think he's faking it most Shut of the time. Shut the fuck up! Comment down below, let us know what your thoughts are. We love your fucking faces! If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe <clears throat> button and get some motherfucking wham up in you, Kato!